Hello, Meredith. It's worse. It's fine. I, I actually don't understand the details, but if there's anything I know is that Alex is a sweet boy. And I'm sure he has his reasons. So don't hate him or find him un unworthy. You also have done things out of your own reasoning. He does love and trust you, if that means anything to you. I'm neither mad nor disappointed, okay? Bye, Meribus. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a 56-year-old woman named Mary Beth from New Jersey. She has been in an online relationship with a man named Alex for about six months. Mary Beth is having suspicions of Alex lying about who he says he is after sending him over $20,000 worth of investments through this investment website. Let's try to get to the bottom of this. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Mary Beth. I work for a high frequency trading firm in Manhattan. And I've been divorced for over three years. And I, I lost my dog last year and that's when I started dating. I always try to meet people, but then of course this one gentleman started in January and that was it. That's when I started online dating. Like many of us, Mary Beth loved her dog. Her passing affected her deeply, but it wasn't the only thing Mary Beth was dealing with at the time. I was married in the past for 23 years. My ex-husband had an emotional affair that he just couldn't admit. So it kind of, we grew apart. We all, everyone wants to be loved. But unfortunately, when our heart is in it and our mind, these 12 inches are very far apart. So it took about, I decided about four years prior. And, you know, to, to deal with it until my son graduated high school. And then I said, I can't do this anymore. I was not a happy person. I, I've, been, uh, I've been divorced for going on three years and I went on my own and I was um, COVID hit. So it was just me at home with my dog. My dog was 14, so she passed away. So then I started, um, Facebook has the online dating and it's free. So I started November of last year. My dog passed away November 18 of last year, 2021. And um, now it's gonna be a year. And then I started dating like in December. After the death of her beloved puppy and the end of her marriage, Mary Beth felt as though her life was falling apart. She was lost until she met Alex, the man she fell in love with online. The first text that Alex sent me, oh my God, I think I even still have a copy of it. I had stated on my web page, on my profile, that I am not interested in anyone that I cannot meet. So his response to me on there was like, I'm so sorry, your rules are out of states, not acceptable because you are so beautiful. <laughs> so that was my first text with Alex, yeah. Oh my God, he seemed older, 62 was a conversation that I just woke up. I've been working all night. I haven't shaved and I think I like the rugged look. So, so it kind of won my heart. To me, he was more masculine and rugged that way. And that's what caught my eye about him. He had hair, so he wasn't bald. So he's a very attractive man when he cleaned up. Oh, look, a little video about him. See, my, my phone even knows more than I do. See? <laughs> I just can't describe the man anymore. My head was spinning. I did not want, my days were going, nothing was getting accomplished. It's like the world stopped and it was only this relationship. So I don't know how to describe the man, handsome.
The future seemed bright for Alex and Mary Beth, and just as their relationship started to bloom, things took a turn for the worse. It really got, it really got intense. The, <clears throat> the texting, the conversation, it felt like I was really like dating someone that was around the corner. I even mailed him a package because he was supposed to be a widower with a daughter. And of course, who wouldn't want, I'm divorced, who wouldn't want a 14-year-old daughter, you know, to hang out with or enjoy life with? Um, never really came out and asked me for money. Started with investments, telling me to open like blockchain and stuff like that and how to cryptocurrency and it's funny, but I work for a high frequency trading firm that has crypto and everything. And I should have learned. Mary Beth and Alex spoke every day. Alex built a bond with her. He eventually got Mary Beth to open an account on the site he said he invested in. Mary Beth trusted him. I opened an account with a company that he referred me to, and it was called We've blurred the site's name because we're handing everything to the authorities. This is one of the most realistic scam sites we've ever seen. It has a dashboard. It has how much you invest in it, how much you transfer your Bitcoins into it. It shows you how much interest or how much you can make at the time. And it looked really intriguing. So I put in $2,000. I started with that. So with that said, <clears throat> I ended up seeing that the money I put in was growing. So I had money in savings. So I said, let me put in some more. And I put in about 20 grand more. And the same day was two, two $10,000 wired from my bank. It was like a name instead of a bank. It was like Jose something and, and it was down in Mexico or something like that. But there was 26,000 altogether. If I still log into that dashboard, it says that I have over, I don't know, $60,000. Things started to spiral out of control when Mary Beth attempted to withdraw the money from the account. Alex began to get angry and told Mary Beth to stop trying to withdraw the money and that she needed to invest even more into the company. So <clears throat> I lied. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> Just forgive me. But I told him, hey, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I can't. I can't do anything anymore. Now I want my money back. How can I get my money back? He told me that he felt sorry and if there's anything I can do. And then I asked him for money and he says, let me see what I can do because I don't have money either. Everything was good until I got a, 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 a dick pic, you know, and then it got, it got really like, when can I see you? I don't want to show you that. And then he was begging me to show him a picture and I made a mistake and I did it with my face. I didn't know that the rules were not your face. And, Anyway, so that's when I got, you know, got ugly. And that's when I got rid of Facebook totally because it was like threatening me. Mary Beth found herself trapped. Sextortion is a serious offense and one that is even being used to target children. Teens are being targeted on everyday apps they're using, like Instagram and TikTok. Now, experts say the surge of Gen Z victims is alarming and shows scammers are becoming more sophisticated. The FBI says scammers pose as attractive women on social media and send nude photos to the victim, demanding they do the same and send them money. If the victim doesn't send money, the scammer threatens to post their photo online. One of the easiest ways to avoid a scam is take that image, drop it into a site like socialcatfish.com, you know, a minute or so later, you know, we spit out where we found that image online. He had um, inappropriate pictures of me. So I had to close down my Facebook account. I literally deleted the whole account, disconnected it because he was saying he was going to go in there and publicize it with other people. And I was like, oh, man, I, I couldn't get rid of the guy. Like, it, it was like he knew too much about me. You know, he knows who my family is. So I didn't want that. And unfortunately, I did tell my family. I told my sons. I had two sons. I told them. I told, uh, you know, anyone, my girlfriends about it because I didn't want to be embarrassed. When Alex realized Mary Beth wasn't going to give in, he tried gaslighting by having another scammer pose as his mother. What you're about to hear is a scammer trying to convince Mary Beth to listen to Alex and cave into his demands. If there's anything I know is that Alex is a sweet boy. And I'm sure he has his reasons. So don't hate him or 
find him un unworthy. Okay, Seekers, Mary Beth understood that she had been scammed, but she was confused and under the impression that she was dealing with a real investment company. At first glance at this investment website, you could see why Mary Beth thought the company was legit, which brought legitimacy to Alex being a real person. It had a place where you can log into the site, a breakdown of their services, and a tech support chat box that was really responsive. Does this website look legitimate to you? Let us know in the comment section below. Next, we took a look at the website's contact information and ran an email, number, and address search to verify everything. We then ran a reverse image search on Alex and we were able to get results on everything in minutes. Before we go any further, here's a quick message from our sponsors. We're in the holiday season and you're probably going to be doing a lot of online shopping. On our website, socialcatfish.com, we have all the tools to make sure you're buying gifts on legitimate websites. By using our email, address, and number search, you'll be able to find out all of the information you need on a company's website. Just go to their contact information, copy all the information over, and drag it into our search box. By picking up a membership for yourself today, you can support our team so we can build out more tools for you to use in the future. Real quick, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. It was now time to sit down with Mary Beth and let her know what we had found. So I'd like to just start off with some of the research that we had reviewed from Alex. So let's start off with the driver's license. Yes. What we had found out was everything in that driver's license was fake. It was the ID number. And then also when we looked into the address, that was actually a valid address. There was no verification that Alex had ever lived at that property or even owned that property. I did mail something to that address and it was returned to sender. Got it, okay. So we had our entire search specialist team searching for Alex. We did everything we could. We used all of our tools to find this person. It took us a long time. The real person in the images is a man named Kevin. Wow. After running several reverse image searches and scouring the web, it turns out Alex had been lying about his identity the whole time. The real person in the images is a man by the name of Kevin. Kevin has his own life and has never met or heard of Mary Beth. With our tools, we're able to find his Instagram and Facebook to prove to Mary Beth that he was not the man behind this scam. His photos were stolen to dupe Mary Beth and other victims out of money. You're in like financial, you know, banking and, and investments, right? Were there any red flags when you initially went to that site? Um, when I originally did log in, create like my login and all that and the reference, all that was fine to me. I didn't see a red flag. When it came to sending the money and it was like to a name and it was specifically, it threw me off. And I, I didn't think because I was in a hurry at the moment and um, I, I just didn't really put two and two together. I do work for a high, I, at that time I was working for a high frequency trading firm for about 13 years. Basically when I was doing the transfer and I logged on, and I did it from my bank. They were basically discover my bank, reached out to me and said, what are you doing? Do you know who you're sending the money to? And I'm like, yes, yes. And when I went back to talk to Alex about it, he was like, you have to hurry up. You're losing the window of opportunity. It was like, I couldn't even go to the bathroom kind of a, no, 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 stop what you're doing. And it became like a rush rush. And as soon as it was released, because it was like constantly asking me text messaging, did it go through? Did it go through? Did it go through? As soon as I got like a screenshot, I sent him the screenshot. Yeah, it went through. And it was weird. How about the other 10,000? Because it was 10 and then 10. How about the other 10? And I'm like, yeah, it went through. It went through. And now I got to go back to work. I got to go. I got to go. And now I kind of cut it. Did not think. I swear it was like a horse with binders on blinders. Although Mary Beth worked for a trading firm for 13 years, she was still scammed by a fake banking site. Scammers will pressure you to feel like the money you are sending is urgent and needs to be sent right away. For example, a message a scammer would send is, I need you to send the gift card right away. I haven't eaten in two days. If you don't send the money, I will be stuck in Syria another year. These pressure tactics make victims irrationally send money. It's the same tactics companies use when they attach a timer to an item that is on sale. You'd sent money to a guy named Jose, and we actually reach out to Jose. 
So we, we tracked Jose down, got his information and called him. First, he didn't pick up the phone, called him back. Jose picks up the phone. We start to explain, you know, who we are and what's happened. And he hangs up on us. Hello? Hey, Jose. Hey. Hey, hey um, this is kind of a weird call, but my name's David McClellan. I'm with a company called socialcabbage.com and we actually help people with online scams. And your information was actually passed. So we followed up, we sent him a video message showing him our office that we're real, we're trying to help him out. And he has not responded at all. Wow. Hey Jose, you can see this is my company, socialcabbage.com. Um, somebody's given out your bank details, your, your home address details. You can see I'm real. Um, you know, I've done you know, hundreds of TV interviews, you know, warning people about scams. And so I'm actually just calling to try to help you out um, and make sure that uh, you're not involved in this because we are helping out a victim that, that's lost a bunch of money and uh, she was given your information too. So um, give me a call back, please. Mary Beth got Jose's banking information from Alex. The $20,000 wire transfer was wired into Jose's account from Mary Beth's. Our team reaches out to money mules like Jose to attempt to stop these scammers from using innocent people to launder money. So we actually went to and the chat was still there at the time. And so I started going through the chat and sure enough, somebody started chatting back with me. And so we had this long chat. We started going back and forth. I basically was telling them that, hey, you know, I've been trying to send money here and, you know, I'm having a difficult time and it's frustrating. And they gave me another person's name. We did a little scam baiting and decided to reach out to this fake bank support chat located on their website. So I decided to go to the website and see what it was about. After getting to the website, I find out that they have a really cool chat form and decided to start a chat. Somebody messaged me within 30 seconds. They started the conversation out saying, hello, greetings, sir, ma'am, how may we be of assistance? I decided not to mess around and I went directly for the kill. I told them that I've been trying to send the money for a few days now and I was having a hard time doing so. They asked me a few simple questions, what my name was, my email, and the date I intended to transfer the money. And if any of you seen any of our episodes, you know about our website, fugiftcards.com. So I decided to drop a link, plain dumb, and said, hey, I've only done this in the past. And sure enough, they clicked on the link. So once we checked the IP address, we found out the first three clicks had come from North Carolina. I had a feeling that's not where the person was. So I continued to talk to them. Through the conversation, they had asked if I had ever sent Bitcoin before. Right away, they gave me a wallet address, which I'm savvy enough to start looking up. And once we trace the money back, we actually trace it back to Coinbase. And those of you that know, we have what are called KYC laws here in the United States. We can file a police report if there's been a crime and potentially get access to the KYC information for these accounts, finding out who the real person is. But I wasn't satisfied. I wanted to see if they would click on a FU gift cards link again and maybe make a mistake. So I dropped the link in there again and asked if we could pay that way. The next time I got a click from Lagos, Nigeria. After they had asked me again to send money through the crypto address, I went and told them that I was not able to send it because the account wasn't verified and that Coinbase was actually asking me to verify the account. They didn't believe me and they asked me for a screenshot. So what I ended up doing is I ended up going to Chrome, I edited the page, I added a link in there, and then I screenshotted that and sent them that as proof. He then asked me again to send money through crypto and I went and got a screenshot saying my card was blocked and I sent it to him saying that I had tried to wire the funds and the card was being blocked for some reason. He then asked me to use MoonPay and sent me another crypto address. I then took a screenshot of the address not being valid because it was a new address and I sent it over to him and I said, is this a scam? Being skeptical at that point in time, he asked to verify me. He asked for a copy of my driver's license and I had asked him if it was a safe place to send it. He says yes. I tell him no problem. So what I start doing is I start making a bunch of typos and tell him I'm sorry, my hands shake and that I'm 87 years old and this has just been a rough time for me and I've been frustrated because I've been trying to send money to them for the last few days. Right away he takes the bait and he sends me money mules, bank account number, routing number and first and last name. I instantly go and copy and paste that, put into our file, and then look up the routing number to see which state the bank account is out of. 
and sure enough, I got a hit. I actually think that some of these money mules know what's going on, by the way. So we can actually go and file a police report and go and actually see who's behind the crypto addresses. Bitcoin is not so anonymous after all. Anytime you're a part of any banking or financial institution, you have to verify your identity with a photocopy of your ID. All exchanges that are working out of the United States have to do the same. I continued to talk to this person and they gave me an email address. I got a name of another money mule. So I ended up calling her. Her name's Darlene. She's from Georgia. Like most of the money mules we contact, Darlene was nervous when we reached out to her. After talking to her on the phone for a while, she told us that someone had advised her not to speak to us. Five minutes later, the chat on the investment website was taken down. Hmm, interesting. And so when I pried and asked her, you know, she's fumbled with her words and then said, oh, it was my bank that told me not to talk to you. One of the main reasons we started this YouTube channel was to encourage people to report their scam. Nine times out of 10, a scammer has several victims. When you report your scam, it can also stop others from being scammed too. File a police report and submit everything to IC3. The, the thing I say all the time is like, there's these scammers that yes, they scammed you. Yes, they got money out of you, but they're doing this to many, many, many other people. And you know, whether you can get on, back on your feet and keep going, other people may or may not be able to do that. And so these are criminals with intention to break people's heart, manipulate people, and steal money from people, right? And so we wanna catch these guys. And so the first thing to do is go to your local police and file a police report. I'm just being candid with you. They probably will say, hey, look, we can't do anything about it, blah, blah, blah. But we're gonna give you a packet of information with the information that we found. And so it's gonna include the crypto addresses, uh, money mules, the bank account numbers, the routing numbers. And so if you hand that over and push to have a detective look into it, this, it's a long process, but like I highly encourage that you go do this. We'll put this information together and then hopefully be able to stop these guys or at least slow them down. Yeah, I have to because you guys did so much work. I'm not going to let you drop. We see this a lot. Scammers will reveal their true identity to their victims. Next comes a sob story about them living in a poor country without opportunities. The victim gives in and is willing to help this scammer scam other people so they can make money. They will accept money for them and even send audio calls like the one Mary Beth received to help the scammer's lie seem more legitimate. We believe this is the case for Darlene after speaking to her over the phone. So there was a voicemail that was left for you. Yes, yes, I forward that, yes. Hello, Mary Beth. It's worse. We've seen this happen many times and because there's so many people involved, what we believe is this is another victim that you know, somebody that was victimized at some point, but was talked into helping the scammer out. And so, you know, what we've seen is the scammers will reveal themselves, right? So, you know, they scam somebody, then they come back and reveal themselves mm -hmm. and they'll continue the conversation either to steal their identity or get them to help them scam other people. Our team was able to help Mary Beth understand what had happened to her. She is still planning to date online. She has a date planned for Thanksgiving with a man she met on a dating app. So you're on this dating app. How's it gone so far? Um, I only had one date and it, it's, it was weird. It was good. <laughs> nice. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Thanksgiving won't be alone. So I get to see someone for Thanksgiving. That's so That's great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, life is good. You just got to have hope and patience and, you know. Sounds great, Mary Beth. Oh, you guys are great. God bless. You guys are, I know you're paying forward. It's awesome. And I'll, I'll follow up. I'll schedule it for Monday lunchtime. I'll take it over and go by on the police department. Okay. Sounds great. Well, I'm glad we were able to help and great luck and, and uh, good luck with your date uh, on Thanksgiving. Yay! <laughs> Mary Beth filed a police report on Monday. We are now waiting to hear back from the authorities for an update so they can start an investigation. Mary Beth spent time with her new friend on Thanksgiving and it went great. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Seekers, we'll see you guys next time.